Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Josep. And that is. And I'm Henrik. And yes. Uh, we're two noobs. Uh, basically, we're just trying to understand uh, AI research papers, and we thought that maybe it's useful for other people to see what we think. Uh, we're definitely not, not experts in the area, but maybe in, if we do this for two years, maybe we'll understand something more. But yeah, it's just a uh, few people trying to figure out whatever is written written in, in a uh, paper, and uh, you can enjoy the process if you want. So yeah, uh, uh, today we're looking at the neural Turing machine paper. It was it actually came out, came out like two years ago, eight, eight years ago. Uh, so, seven, seven years ago, so basically, uh, and it seems quite quite interesting. Uh, so, uh, what did you think about the paper, uh, Hendrik? What were your first thoughts? Uh, first thoughts is a tough one. I think my general thoughts are that uh, it is interesting that this paper did not get more a and mainstream attention. And B, that it hasn't really continued as much as you would expect it to. So the main idea that they're like a, an architecture for memory neural networks is something everyone wants. But uh, so, and it's like an approach to that. But uh, I, I guess we can discuss our ideas why it didn't become so popular that it would take over the world. Yeah, that was also interesting for me because I, I would have presumed that there was a lot more uh, like work that came out of this, but uh, you can't really. Maybe maybe they've just changed the terms. But if you if you just like Google or try to find that neural Turing machine papers, there are many. Uh, I guess the idea your idea of Henrik was that most likely because this is a paper from Google DeepMind that they just changed course and went into some different direction. And for some reason, this wasn't really picked up uh, by other people, at least that uh, we could see. Uh, but I think generally, I would like to, the papers that are out, that are out there, I would like to continue with them later uh, after this paper is over. Uh, but yeah, uh, so basically, yeah. So the idea with uh, this is, it's, uh, it's a basically a neural network that is aided by memory. So kind of like, uh, let's say like a long short term memory uh, neural networks, uh, but uh, this time it has like a specific memory block uh, that, uh, uh, that the network can read and write to. And that seems like quite an interesting and logical idea. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I guess you could, it's like it's more separate from the network in some way. Um, and they, basically, yeah, if we go to like figure one, I think if you go like figure figure by figure basis, I think that's yeah, we can do that first start. Best way to uh, start. Uh, so this the figure one gives the like main idea behind it. So the controller is the neural network. Uh, in this paper specifically, it's uh, they're testing the feed forward network and the long short term memory. Actually, that, that is also one of my main. I don't know, maybe I just missed it somehow. But my main issues with the paper is that they didn't really. Because they showed the results, but they, they only showed the results for the neural, neural Turing machine without telling us uh, if these are without comparing. Because well, they they do did uh, two versions uh, for the neural Turing machines. Like I said, they did, did one with the long short term memory and one uh, with the feed forward network. I didn't really compare the besides uh, the training step. They didn't really compare the results. Uh, uh, in, in figures, which was interesting, they com compared results in uh, like in a graph, uh, but they didn't uh, show the exact results. Yeah, it felt like a, a paper where we got really cool uh, results. Uh, really sad that you you other people can't get these cool results. It's like uh, with with other deep mind stuff also, like Alpha Zero. It's like here is uh, Alpha Zero owning everybody, other engines, other players. And uh, if you spend three years of work, uh, then open source people can go also get this thing based on our papers. This is basically the same. Yeah. So they have they didn't release any source code. They didn't Which release any, yeah they didn't release any uh, source code or implementation details. And then people tried reproducing it. And here it is. 
uh, this was released 2018, which is four years later, and this is like the first good open source implementation of it. And it's like a st stable, successful <laughs> implementation of a new, because others tried, but they failed basically, because there was, uh, there was some comments that there are nuns, yeah. Our key contribution is not to implement, but to make training stable and reliable. We do not observe the slow learning or gradients becoming NAN that other implementations have reported. So people people tried reproducing, but they failed, basically. And they say, uh, but ha ha ha, you can't get this cool stuff that we have at DeepMind, basically. Uh, that is weird, because, I mean, if you're already releasing a paper, you should, like, I, I guess it's because it's from a company, but I guess I, I as a good, uh, we should also preface that we're both PhD students as well. Uh, so to have a good paper, a good journal article, you should always be able to give you, like give us results that we can actually produce, but they didn't really make this easy. And I, I guess that is one of the main stumbling blocks why didn't this didn't really take off because it's like proprietary, it's like proprietary uh, commercial uh, for uh, for uh, Google DeepMind. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, so, but I, I would, I would claim that's their goal. The, yeah, the reason sure. for writing this article is bragging and advertising to potential people joining DeepMind. So, <laughs> for it, 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 so it, it will fulfill. So, they don't necessarily want people to be able to reproduce it if they see it, it being like good enough that they only want advertising rights. Yeah. Because this wasn't actually, was this actually released in some journals besides, besides preprint? Uh, you mean the original paper? Yeah. There was some nature stuff, um, I think. Uh, po, po, po. There was some nature stuff, I think, I'm pretty sure, mentioned somewhere. Uh, But I know it was under the, 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 I, I would claim the next, next step of this, which was this, this stuff. Okay. I haven't read that one. Yeah. But I just, I, I, w I want to reference it that the, this rep, rep, this is referenced as like a continuation by the same people in Define. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. but, uh, we could. I guess we can talk about that. that yeah, the next time. Yep. But I guess the main 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 issue uh, we most likely we both have with this paper is that uh, it really it like helps like the feel forward in the sense that we know that this is doable, but at the same time it's like yeah you have to figure it out yourselves and you can't really test our stuff. And also the the all of the problems are in the end toy problems. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, you could compare it to, let's say, some initial problems that were solved with neural networks in not 60s, but 70s, 80s. So people, oh, gradient descent also works. We can also teach this thing, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, totally problems, but you know, generalization hasn't been solved. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, and they haven't shown it to work, to solve a real, like a problem that, uh, it's actually needed to solve that, that, that is not just that is not yeah that is not just oh we can copy things by the way like here is a trivial algorithm that does the same thing uh, but this basically uh, shows that we can we can find these uh, algorithms that are kind of unsolved like not other other approaches can't uh, solve the uh, to to find this general algorithm mm. this approach can but now. How, how well would it scale to solve other problems? We don't know from this yeah. paper. And I, I, I would say that's also a big reason why, why kind of others haven't uh, spent so much effort on it. Because yeah. coming back to this paper, if you look at the commit history and the amount of issues and comments, etc., mm -hmm. amount of interaction, it's also not very popular. Yeah, we should uh, try to make it more popular. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, it or we should. Or, or it's like, a, or once again, it is there is some kind of a uh, next step done by DeepMind that they found that it, it they should go in it's a different just, direction. Yeah, I guess we have to get more information on the future stuff. Maybe if we read the next papers.
uh, next paper at least. I think, as, as I understood, there's only one more paper in this af after it. That's, uh, I didn't go into the deep into the paper. I only was like, are, is, is there a continuation? Ah, there is some kind of a continuation. Yeah. And they have this. Uh, okay. So at least if that is in nature, I hope for nature. Okay, I can't really comment on what what is in the paper, right? But I hope uh, since it is already was accepted by published by nature, then that is more right reprodu reproducible. At least I hope so. Yeah, and they also have also. an open source oh. GitHub thing, and uh... and it is. Yep. So that is good. Or but, but yeah, main, main, main point, we can come, we can go back like to the paper and to the start. So, <laughs> yeah. so, the, so one important part is this is all like uh, basically recurrent neural networks. So uh, no, I mean they did it with the feed power network as well. Yeah, well, yeah, fair. Uh, so yeah, uh, but but but, yeah, but but the uh, applications were. Were, were there any examples of people or stuff? Yeah, yeah, but that, that was my issue, like what I talked about before. But if you go up, uh, like say, like figure four or something, yeah, because yeah, go, yeah, go down. Like, yeah. Like here, here you can see both uh, NTM with LSTM and with the feed forward controller. So at least they seem to be getting the same results. But yeah, that was sad. Like this, this the only thing they show about feed forward controller is uh, we can hear a keyboard really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, that uh, they, they showed that with the feed forward networks, they show basically the general results, but they, I would have liked to see if there are any like algorithmical differences. Because here, what we can see is basically uh, what they thought that the copy algorithm looks like. So they they taught the network to copy, and then they looked at what the uh, what uh, Finnish the network actually does, and they inter interpreted this as this uh, two basically while loops. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. seeing the input vector and then basically outputting their input vector, which is interesting. Yeah, this one, it, this I think was the coolest result of the paper. Yeah, but uh, they are all, again sad that they only did this for basically copy. They didn't do this uh, like a step by step uh, show the code for uh, for other ones. Uh, but before we get into the stuff, uh, we're doing uh, jumping like back and forth. We should actually mm -hmm. uh, go go forward. What the net, uh, go back to like figure one, uh, and then also uh, what, what the yeah. What, uh, what, yeah, the, what the write heads and read heads basically mean. So, so like we said, the controller can be basically can be any network. Uh, and they only tested it with the feed for network and the long short term memory. So it, is, it would be interesting to see what the other uh, networks uh, uh, could do here, or is it possible to use other networks? Uh, there were there were issues with basically uh, there was a, like a, uh, what's the word the, like bandwidth limit with the feed for network or what's the word? Uh, basically, you would need more write heads and uh, read heads for the feed forward network for, for some. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't can't remember the word in English, but yeah, the, the writing and reading was interesting. So they had basically two differentiable uh, mechanisms uh, for writing uh, for writing and reading. Uh, for reading, or was it for or addressing? I make it to some basically. Yeah, no, no, yeah, both of them were like. Uh, yeah. So it was location based and uh, and then there was the content based. So basically either you can uh, so the can move so the controller can move the right there to read as either based on like going to us like having a point there and going to a specific uh, memory location or you can uh, basically the controller spits out like a key and then tries to match it uh, in the memory with the closest uh, uh, with some kind of distance, uh, with the, the closest memory, memory, memory cell, and it was interesting that they like. I, I didn't. I, I I haven't heard about content content based uh, matching or content based addressing like this before, because I I was mm -hmm. I was been like thinking of uh, basically uh, you just know the location via pointers or something. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you knew more about it that before that. No. Um, but it made sense. <laughs> yeah. To do it like that. Yeah, that, that, that both of them. It was also interesting that they didn't have to specifically read from like one cell, but they could read from like uh, multiple cells at, at the same time, uh, depending on uh, uh, what the controller thought would, would, was needed. 
there's like a general overview of the thing. Uh, okay, uh, but yeah, if you yeah, want to... and th there was also uh, some interesting sentence here, uh, here that uh, uh, when like how do they do kind of many uh, in a row? And it was that was a bit confusing to me. Especially the sentence where, where they say multiplication is commutative. Uh, well, no, not, in, but not with matrices, but with general numbers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's like, okay, read that sentence, go back out. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, where, where is oh, the sentence? So, uh, this one. Uh, okay. Therefore, the elements of a memory location, okay, you know. Uh, when multiple write heads are present, the ratios can be performed in any order as multiplication is commutative. You mean that one? Yeah. So this one basically, uh, so it's memory writing. You have some kind of uh, uh, address you're writing to, uh, and then you have this uh, uh, memory vector from the previous time step, and then you multiply it with one minus this uh, uh, weights times a race vector et. So basically, race vector tells us uh, how much information you take from the last, last time step, right? Uh, uh, Do I know this correctly? So, say it again. So the, if I remember correctly, the, basically the idea behind the, oh no, the the, B, I, the idea behind the erase vector is how much information to take in from this new time step, right? Because it's uh, it's 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 uh, it is multiplied with the WT, uh, which is for the weights with the current time step, right? Yes, I think so. Yes, I, I believe it. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> and yeah, the shifting idea was also uh, good here. So that, that is like the main uh, main uh, mechanisms behind it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the, it's uh, kind of uh, uh, so. So the main concept is interesting that you first basically erase some memory, then you add some memory. So that's yeah. like why it has to kind of do it like that. But then they say, ah, you can do many multiple, you can do multiple erasures. Kind of doesn't matter yeah. which one you do first. Yeah, if you go a bit down at the uh, top of the page seven, there is a, like a nice figure uh, flow where you can see the address addressing mechanism. Uh, yeah, because yeah, that is that is uh, related to this uh, what we were talking about. Uh, is it? It's. I think this is for this addressing part, but uh, okay, yeah. but not the. the, oh, the, yeah. the okay. I don't like. I, yeah. They had a. They had a the latest yeah. slide where you don't give a fuck where your figures go, which is. Uh, I was very confused. At, I was very confused at some point. Like, wait, I'm at a new chapter already, and this figure <laughs> isn't really shouldn't be here. Then yeah, 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 that's the classic. It's like what people like for whatever whatever crazy reason, but. Absolutely awful. So you have to actually like figure out. Oh, there is a figure one. What does it mean? Uh, I'll find it in text. Where is figure two? Ah, oh, figure two is here, not there. Uh, yeah, but I, I mean the the. I think the trick here is um, that uh, you pretty much uh, do like point by multiplication with this uh, ratio vector. So you uh, as they describe here. It's kind yeah, of so like the it. You basically do it for the whole uh, memory at one uh, in one time step, right? Yeah, so basically you can imagine you have a chunk of memory somewhere and then you multiply it with uh, many, many values in a range of zero to one. And it, there it doesn't matter which order you multiply it in, but it yeah. took some time to figure out what, like, what, what they were trying to say. <laughs> This is a bit confusing, but yeah, it makes sense actually. 
going actually thinking it through. And then they then they use the add vector to add more information to it. Yes, and and then they have uh, for each memory cell some new information. And the main kind of novelty or why it's so fancy is that they can do gradient descent on these operators. And uh, due to that fact, they can um, use the training input to basically put information into memory. Mm. So that's the that's the magic. That's why the differentiability uh, is important. And differentiability is just always important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's why they're like, oh yeah, we got this cool differentiable thing that you can use gradient descent on. So now because we have these things, we can uh, do fancy things. And uh, uh, and yeah, so we get to addressing. Yes. Now, I will. Unfortunately, I lost my highlights in this addressing part. Uh, but I remember being confused a bit how the interpolation part works. Uh, do you remember it? So basically, in this flow, we can see that this is like content-based addressing. So, like we said, they have like two 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 versions. One way you can just match, uh, try trying to find the information that most most mostly looks like the output of the controller basically so that's content content based addressing and for this they go through an interpolation phase i don't exactly remember what i, I remember yeah. like having a bit difficult to understand how they do it i think the main uh, part is here um so uh you went to location uh, content uh but I, I would imagine the uh, interpolation part to be very similar, but uh, not in the space of, uh, let's say, um. not in the space of uh, memory addresses, but uh, closeness to other contents. So they, they uh, also say somewhere here, that uh, the content-based thing is a generalization of locally uh, the location-based thing. Somewhere about here. If it's a generalization, then why do you need location-based thing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> in our experiments, however, providing location-based addressing as a primitive operation proved essential for some forms of generalization. I wonder if they don't know why, way. but for some reason, it worked better. I wonder if they could have done it the other way around as well, only having location. Well, uh, I think the main question is, um, So, uh, okay, let's take a step back. How did you understand content-based addressing in memory? <laughs> <laughs> so, what I understood is basically uh, the controller outputs a key, or basically a, a vector, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, and then they try, they try to look, uh, they, they calculate all the differences between the current, currently everything in memory. So they calculate it with the cosine difference, basically dot product. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, based on that, they find the most similar location, and then they can like sharpen their focus or attention, so they get like the where this uh, basically they get like a distribution on what memory to access, and then they can uh, sharpen their focus on how precisely we want the best best uh, most 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 the clo uh, closest by distance, I guess, uh, content something like okay. that. Uh, now it, let's imagine you have. Uh, uh, so what could interpolation in that context be? Would be if you have three contents that have similarish weights and nothing uh, similarish uh, like distances and um, 
and you would need still a distance that is uh, like you would want some kind of a con like a content measure that is between so you would weigh those different contents together in the context of lo location it makes sense but in the context of content content so I, you're, you're thinking it's like a, like a, like basically like a medium value yeah or like or, weighted average value basically but this is from the previous time step say it again so uh, if you look at figure, if you look at figure two, they say resulting content-based rating is interpolated with the weighting from the previous time step based on the value of the interpolation gate. So they, I think they still just do the what the same thing you will see for location that they just uh, uh, they, they uh, so whatever the gate value is, I don't know how that is. I guess that is learned, or it's a hyperparameter. I don't know. I don't think it, it said which one it is. Anyway, uh, you you multiply the weighting weights from last time step with my one minus the interpolation. So basically, if the uh, interpolation gate is zero point six, then you take more into account the current time step than the other one. So these are just weights, right? You mean um, there's a key? Yeah. The there's the previous state, which is uh, uh, weights and memory. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, the whole whole uh, neural net and the memory, and then uh, the controller outputs are uh, then outputs on this uh, on the last state. Yeah, right. outputs of the last, so outputs of basically the current outputs. Yeah, yeah. But depending on output. whether there is an input or what. Uh, the shift weighting determines whether how much weight is what. So, so, so the weight. How how? Uh, Mt. Memory of t. How is it t? So that is so basically. So the previous state is like the end, and yeah. what what the memory ended up look, looking like right then, right? And it's just so what 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 is the weighting? What are the weights? I'm just like, figure, uh, like, like, but but it's it's t not t minus one, but I'm yeah, expect, no, I'm assuming that's, that's like no no that's correct at the end of t minus at the beginning beginning of m t so that's like the big beginning of m t right? It's the end of m t minus one. So I mean. It's like that. I, I, I don't know. I would just think about it as like at the end of the last time step. This is the memory now. So which is the, at the beginning of M, MT. So it doesn't. You can. I mean, okay. I, it, I, it doesn't matter. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I, I can. I can believe that's what it says. But <laughs> it's. I don't like it. I don't like describing time like that. But whatever. It's fine. Because if I remember correctly, didn't really. I am correct that you know, they didn't really like try to re very thoroughly give us understanding on how this works. No, uh, they, they they kind of just there is a me there is one sentence about figure two also in the text. Mm -hmm. um, so so this is basically uh, like here here is addressing and here is what uh, how addressing works in practice. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, said they take into account the last, what, what happened at the last time to step, and then they linearly, as we learned, linearly interpolate. <laughs> Interpolation is linear. Uh, for those who don't understand, uh, why we were laughing about, about this, there was uh, the last paper, which we didn't broadcast to the world, uh, which we discussed ourselves, is basically, or yeah, he talks, they talk about the uh, interpolation, and uh, how the deep learning community misunderstands the meaning of interpolation a lot of times, and how it's not a useful uh, word to use. But here, at least here, they do it the, uh, linearly, so it's, it should be okay. <sighs> it's not a good thing that it's a linear interpolation, but <laughs> yeah. But anyways, they 
the main idea behind it is they just take into account what happened the last times that uh, it's, it's interesting though why do we need the interpolation I, or is this like something from long short term memory in neural networks because I don't know I don't know that much specifically or don't remember that much specifically about them I also don't remember spe uh, any specifics about the interpolation in LSTM but uh, But yeah, I would. It's like it depends a lot on what you define as interpolation. <laughs> well, they define it as uh, equation seven. <laughs> um, Basically, it's like the weight of averaging. Yeah, which. Um, So yeah, I, I think this is basically what they want to. The, so it's, it's it's not like it. How is it interpolation at, or versus weighing? Just like two things together. Like yeah. what? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't see I mean, the, it's like an interpolation between two things is, is now also average. Averaging is now called henceforth called as interpolation. But, yeah, but this is not even averaging. Okay, it's weighted averaging. Yeah. Weighted averaging, yeah. So, it's weighted, it's, which it's is fine, average. but which is fine. It's just like ten ten different people in the same domain use interpolation with ten different meanings. Then maybe the word is not very useful. I think that was yeah. Well, this is uh, eight years ago. This article is old. Now everyone pays more maybe attention to the word interpolation, at least in the deep learning community. Yeah, <laughs> based on tweets. Based but, on yeah. tweets. <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically, coming back to what where what where we were confused in, we have the last time step info, uh, and we combine it with uh, the uh, uh, info coming from the uh, content system, which is the well memory stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and then you get back to the uh, to the weight, the kind of combined weight of the uh, previous time step and the memory system. Yeah, so these weights are current, I think, basically. So we're always working with the whole memory together, right? Should be. So yeah, so yeah, so you have the last, last state, so not memory, but just state, so the previous, uh, let's say, just result. Then you get the uh, one minus g is like g. It then has to be has to, I say has to be, but uh, um, that's a good, I think you have a very good question. Is it? Um, Each head emits a scalar interpolation gate GT in the range. The value of G is used to blend between the weight and the loss. Okay, so uh, it, it has to be it has to be learned. So yeah, so it based not the not the whole but everything is based on how many read and write you have. Yeah, but the, but this uh, uh, GT has to be learned. Learned. Oh, was it was. Has to be. Okay, yeah. it's a blend between. The value of G okay, is used. Doesn't, I, think, uh, I think I uh, think this basically every read head and every write head has their own parameter yeah. set, uh, which means that uh, I think that they must be right. Because yes, the, yeah. yeah. But these are not parameters. It's just that these are all every these are dynamic par parameters. So you don't, yeah. I guess you don't, you don't not, you don't learn them specifically, but you learn the controller network, which learns to use the correct parameters. In the sense. Correct? Yes. So you don't, what, what do you mean you don't learn them specifically? I mean, there's not like a specific value for the read head uh, interpolation gate uh, for the, for I, I, for the whole, let's say, one 
uh, one uh, what's the word? one uh, exercise. So whatever copying, let's say. Uh, but uh, the, it's it's so when I will I will presume or if I understood this correctly, or maybe it's just I have to make presumptions because it doesn't say it clearly. Uh, yes, that, uh, it doesn't uh, have uh, it doesn't have uh, understandable uh, let's say writings of ma like the it should either put more indices. So we're guessing because we assume that they don't. But I know, but clearly. no, but it is still it's g at the time step t. So this means that the, the g is dynamic, which I want to come up to. So it's not so each right head doesn't have a specific g, uh, but at each time step the right head gets a new g. But that's, that's, they also say, but I would agree, but I would say G, D and something because uh, there was after each head emits, I uh, know, yeah, above here, each head emits a scalar interpolation J, K, G, T. Yes. So each each one of them has their own yeah. scalar interpolation. Yeah. So it's, it's G, D, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> N I whatever. Yes, N I whatever. Yes. Then okay, the, yeah, so it has to be like that. Has to be has to change in time, has to be dynamic. Each gate has one. So both of yes. that info has to be learned in this context to get the uh, for this thing to work. I think yes. is the important part. Yes. And then they basically can also shift uh, they are the shift weighting. Which basically moves the the read, read and write heads, uh, so uh, some pound a month. It's like a barrel, if uh, a barrel rotate, like a barrel. It's uh, like a barrel shifter. So uh, they shift it by like. Uh, so th this is only for location. Uh, so for location, because I don't, you don't have the shift, I guess, for content. Doesn't make sense, right? You would need to. Well, depends. Uh, it, there is a convolutional shift here. Yeah. So, uh, also. so, so I, I get okay. We can talk about the for the content, but for location, it makes sense, right? So you get, you have a location now. In the last, let's say you had some kind of location last time step, then I guess, and then you can shift it to the next time. In the next time step, you can shift it how many, how many places you want, right? Uh, but how does it work with content based, uh, the shift? Because with the location, it's like at least for easy for me to visualize that you have an array. And you have a pointer to that array, and then you you uh, increment the pointer, and then you go to the next uh, uh, next element in the array, right? So that is basically location-based shifting, but it's parallel shifting. So, so in so in context space, it it would be for loop over uh, let's say objects or classes instead of for loops over uh, memory. Yeah, but does it? I mean, but what does it shift next to? Does it does it like? Is it? Uh, I don't but, think it's but, uh, pointers to so I would assume that the, in that same way th there is a pointer to a content and then you loop over all contents. Let's say colors, you go over red, blue, green, blah 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 instead of. Uh, okay, let's see. After interpolation, each head emits a shift weighting st that defines a normalized distribution over the allowed shift integer shifts. Okay, so basically. A distribution on how much you can shift rate. For example, if if shifts between minus one and one are allowed, ST has three elements corresponding corresponding to the degree to which shifts of minus one, zero, and one are performed. The simplest way to define the shift weightings is to use soft magnifier of the appropriate size attached to the controller. Interesting. Uh, so soft max basically means it just chooses one of those. Uh, Categories, which is the most probable in this context. The most probable shift. Most probable shift. Yeah. Okay, so I still, so I can, I don't know. I'm just having a trouble visualizing it because I can, I can understand how you basically just like if you're doing this location based addressing, then you basically you can just move around locations, right? I, I, I have a logical thing what what it means to move in the location based, but does does it mean to move in the content based? Does it? Because it doesn't somehow segment everything that looks similar, and and not only doesn't or it only like shifts in in the like similarity space, whatever word that is. But then you would have to have some bounds, and so I don't know. 
I, I hope you understand what the issue I'm having. <laughs> yes, I mean, I also don't know. How, let's say somebody would tell you implement this addressing mechanism part uh, tomorrow by tomorrow, so we could have this network working. Then you'd be like, sorry, what? I mean, I could, yeah, I could implement something. I have no idea if this would be this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I wonder if there is like uh, maybe if we just do a small detour, look at the uh, GitHub. Maybe they have. Uh, because they have to have it uh, defined right there. Can you in the source code to see like addressing addressing? Mm. Run tasks uh, generate data NTM then. Yeah, yes. I think there. Uh, and we uh, want to search for uh, just maybe content. Addressing yeah. mode, I think, is a good one. Uh, now we need, want to see. You. Define addressing. Uh, focusing by content goes and says, okay. Okay, this, I think this takes a bit more time to understand. Because uh, this is only focusing. We need to, sh to see shifting itself, right? Yes, but uh, let's see where the addressing is. Uh, Use. No, it's still only. Uh, it's. Oh, it, if, if addressing. For the... each addressing head. Uh, wait one second. Okay, now it comes. So this is basically uh, maybe the main main part. Yeah. So yeah, if each uh, of these cells has a call <clears throat> and goes over uh, all of the heads and mm -hmm. calculates k, k beta g s gamma. So these uh, if we go k, uh, k, this, k was K was the key, beta was uh, key strength. Uh, G was the interpolation gate. Yeah, uh, S was. Ah, oh, S is basic. S is the thing we're looking for. So this is the shift rating. Yeah. So they do the same thing uh, for content and location. Yeah. So it's still just basically. Uh, shifts in the location space then doesn't take into. Oh, okay. Place. I mean, well, yes, because the. I'm just overthinking it. I think this is our dynamic, but I really overthink it and don't understand it, and then you're like, hmm. They're confused for a bit, and then, oh, yeah, it's, it makes sense, it's easy. Let me explain. <laughs> you can, uh, we can hope. <laughs> um, where is the shift range, uh, shift range defined? Um, no, it's just shift range equals one. So, as I understand it, basically the same thing for location and content based addressing the shifting doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm just trying to uh, figure out intuitively what that means. So we have a we have some information in memory, and we um, have information in memory in a in a row, and mm -hmm. we are trying to uh, with this S parameter move through the memory mm -hmm. but only once which is already a bit confusing to me that the let's say that the s is okay, one okay, one no. one zero mi minus one zero one it's like you uh, can only go back one step or forward one step 
Ah, uh, so you can't like jump. Yeah. Was it like this, right? If I, it, 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 just, it, that, but it, it, it was only if it didn't say that it has to be like that. Yeah, yeah, but they say that, for example, they bring this yeah. example, and in this code, it seems like it's not necessarily this example, but it is still one specific guess. Wait, I think. No, yeah, no, no, it's not. Oh, through the, all, all the head how, how good your how good your Python? <laughs> so I mean, they go through all, all of the head parameters, right? In one dimension, uh, define how they define the array. I don't know. And then they from the second one, they go from minus plus two to plus two. What? So they, <laughs> why, why the fuck? Oh, okay, plus, yeah, two, plus, plus two uh, plus, plus, uh, plus. So why is there a range. plus two here? So there is a shift range. Shift range is uh, the amount that you actually shift. Why is yeah, there a plus two? I don't know. I think they that's just like a, where they store uh, stuff in the head parameter thing. So they have an object called head parameter, and in different parts they have the different uh, info. And something is in plus one, something is here, and something is in plus two. And uh, from plus two to whatever is where they hold the uh, and where they get these uh, s values you muted yourself uh, of course we haven't come through that i'm just wondering why i why are these like numbers hard coded uh, they, uh, they have like, it should a, be like the super constant somewhere what this plus yeah. two means no they have an, some internal structure with these memory vector dims um they use it for for others like they use it for uh, head parameter like uh if you if uh let's go then i'll see head parameter list God damn it. Uh, so it takes, uh, like it has a bunch of, uh, some, like, uh, variables in the head parameter object, basically. And from there it has, it is, uh, taken everything in the, in one dimension and then according to like something is in self memory vector dim, something mm -hmm. is in self memory vector dim plus one, something is in plus two up to shift range. Well, like plus two up to plus two plus shift range. So three columns basically. Um, and something is in minus one. So in the end, so, no, so that's in the end. So, so yeah, so this is the, uh, in between, and this is can be different sizes, and then they just take yeah. the last one, and then they get like they, this is just like these some let's say matrix manipulation stuff. It doesn't matter. We should we shouldn't like get bogged down here. Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, what they do here is similar to what is done here. So basically, this applies to both of them. Um, also, I, to me, it feels like this is like overlapping a lot between both the, both approaches, and they are basically mm. not. The, it seems like it's separated, but it's not separated. It's basically one whole thing, and you can do one of one of the other or the other. But the main approach is the same. But uh, the content-based addressing then has some extra uh, thing here, which is uh, that the uh let's say the no it does both no what no it does content first and then location I know. yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if uh content and vwc if so it should have also content and location 
So if you go down a bit more, does it also have content and location? Does it return? Okay, does it return? Does it? Uh, yeah, if 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 uh, if it's only content mode, then it returns here. This it doesn't go here. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, it uh, takes the WC, so the content-based uh, addressing, and also adds uh, location-based addressing. So it does both in that case. Mm -hmm. And the S is calculate is used uh, only in the location-based. So coming back to the original point where we were, are both of them used? And now that I think when we look at here, this describes the addressing mechanism, uh, addressing mechanism for both location and content. Yes. And if you do, yeah, that now it makes sense. They just can forgot so to can mention, it... they forgot to write about it. <laughs> So can I explain uh, it in like the 10 words? Focusing by content is uh, standalone. Implemented here. Yes. If uh, if uh, if only content mode is turned on, if it's content and location mode turned on, then it does both of these steps and it also does the content like this these uh, calculates these parameters and does all of these uh, parts. So, so if finds you get the, these uh, S's, uh, G's, uh, these parameters. So if you go back to the paper, so uh, if you just look at figure two, so yeah. basically, so here we it says content-based addressing, right? Mm -hmm. So at which point? Is the location-based addressing happening? Or no, no. This is this is flow diagram of the addressing mechanism. So it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily say content-based addressing. When I say content addressing is written in, some, in one of the boxes, the first box. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first part. This is uh, this is this part yes. calculating yes. the co co uh, k, which is this uh, similarity, and calculating mm -hmm. the wc. And you could just return wc as the result here. Which okay. would be just the just the distance, just the, just these these two equations, calculating the similarity and calculating the weight based on similarity, and then and we then, would get the weight. And then if we go back, uh, I know I mean go up a bit. Up, yeah. Uh, if we look at this, so basically, uh, content so content based addressing is the first one, and the the next three are basically location based. Yes. So basically. Yeah, this, so these are not two separate things. This is this is like one big mechanism. Yes, but you could use this output here if, in if here. All of, these are, all of these are zero or something. <laughs> the, no, or, or you code it. You code if if content do this. If not, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, with the, with the neural network, you don't do that, right? I'm talking about the neural network has to like learn. Yeah, I mean, this if is uh, uh, global. So this is like you can put it to be content and location, uh, like to init the cell uh, using content and location, but you can't put it. Today, or this thing use this uh, one thing uses one thing, one thing uses another thing, or you change it each step, it's like a global, basically, hyperparameter. What is your addressing mode? Which, which type of math do you want to use? They found that the, adding these blocks of interpolation, convolutional shift and sharpening added to the uh, final result, basically. You're muted again. Because if I remember correctly, the beta that goes into content is basically like sharpening, right? It's key strength, but, but that is basically like sharpening. Wasn't it? If you go, is it wasn't it the same idea? Hello, code. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, don't see no. it right away. Okay. Uh, hello, equation. So yeah, the beta is here, right? It's inside. It's like oh. multiplier. Amplifier oh. attenuate the precision of yeah, the focus. Yeah, It should be the same thing as the sharpening. Right, because if you go to sharpening, 
Вот так вот тут. Yes. Okay, wait, uh, sharp pen. Yes, it is similar. To each, uh, oh, okay, so uh, it's uh, over, uh, uh, there, right? it's so yeah, yeah, so they okay, have so two different functionalities. Yeah, yeah. So this has the uh, of the focus. So basically, this is a parameter that kind of increases or decreases the weight of the focus. Mm -hmm. While this one uh, gets rid of some uh, effect caused by the shifting effect and softmaxing the shifting effect. OK, I think we can move on to the results. Yay! <laughs> Having uh, not gone through this paper as in depth as we maybe could have, should have, yeah. then uh, improvisation part over results was uh, easier to look at results first. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So, uh, first copying, coolest yes. result ever. Uh, A, the neural Turing machine was able to generalize the copy operation. So even with, it with learned... Lossy. Yeah, but it learned on the length of uh, copying on the, like uh, an operation with the length of 20, and mm. it was also able to copy longer sequences. Yeah, up to, like they tried up to 100, I think. Yeah. But, but, I mean, it was, uh, but uh, yeah. So in some way, there is a question of why is it lossy in the first place? And uh, in that context, I would say it's still, let's say, a, a trivial operation where the neural network doesn't have to do anything. It just has to learn the memory, basically. It has to uh -huh. learn, uh, learn a good representation of its memory to take the, uh, yeah, it's like, um, yeah. Take memory uh, and 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 output it. Because of course, I mean, at, at, I was also thinking like how, how would like enlarging or making the memory smaller affect this. But of course, if you go over the memory limit, then you can't really copy larger than that, right? Yes. Or, can... or like if it's that you, uh, it's not. So why would I like how how? how to think why the generalization fails. Like, why, why would the generalization fail when you get larger? Because I was, uh, I listened to a talk he gave at Microsoft like five years ago, and he would say, someone just asked like, why don't you do, uh, so why why are the shiftings the relative, not absolute? And why don't you, why don't you have like random access memory? Like, why don't you, why don't you have absolute access, accessing? Uh, why is why is it relative? And it's a very logical answer is that you can just because uh, with relative it doesn't matter what the size is, right? Of the memory. Uh, with absolutes, uh, you always have to you have more parameters basically that you have to play with. Uh, it's just interesting to think why why does the generalization fail at, when we're going to larger? And is it owned by memory at some point? Is it is it just it as if we go to one, it, it comes too close to the memory memory limit, which was like 128, I think. I think that it's like a general uh, computer architecture question. Why do you define, well, like, what is the best way on how to define a block of memory? And how to address the block of memory? Because I think it's a, like a similar question. What is the most efficient way of handling memory inside a computer? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, but uh, me also not in that. But let's say I think the, those two things are related, basically. Mm. Do you have, let's say, just. Um,
I think it, at the start of the paper, they talk a bit about uh, this uh, working memory versus uh, uh, quote unquote hard drive storage of uh, also. Mm -hmm. And uh, so neuropsychology and the, mm -hmm. what is like, how do brains work? And what does it mean for a brain to store memory? Um, I think the, so let's say the working memory is different from long, long-term storage because of the similar issues that you have on a, uh, on a computer is caching mm -hmm. <laughs> basically you can only load so much things into cache. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need to manage it very well. Yes. So if you make your m memory endlessly big the, uh, with absolute uh, references, then if you have new stuff coming in, you need to you need to do the operation where you send uh, the data back and forth, uh, basically. Yeah. From, from, and in whatever way this is done in a brain, I think that you run into the same same uh, same problem that. Okay, I said my absolute memory is here in this part, but uh, it's not actually, but I, or I don't know if it would actually be. I would say this relative thing in that context is a good generalization because you can just move through memory and yeah. at some point you look back or you figure out that you are back at the start. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, the idea was quite logical. Uh, uh, I just was thinking like that was also a thing that I thought would be interesting was the basically this, everything here is in cache because everything is let's say yeah like a, a cycle of a network right is one that access so everything is mm -hmm. there is no latency between the uh, memory access and uh, the network itself so uh, like uh, it would be interesting to see like uh, future work on this where the, there is latency in the memory access to see how does it act so I mean this is comes like becomes related like branch prediction in what CPUs do, right? Because I know they now also at least they like at least AMD, for example, likes to say that they use uh, neural network based uh, branch prediction, right? So whatever that means. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it would be interesting to see like, uh, like a generalization from this, uh, where because everything here, like I said, is uh, well, let's say cycle based. But if we if the neural network has latency uh, with memory. So it has to choose what to keep in the cache and what 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 we put into long term storage and uh, and then the, whatever the latency is that the neural network continues to work or at least gets punished uh, for uh, taking uh, let's say more cycles or how however you define it so there are like let's yeah, say yes. every every time at every time you access the memory you lo lose ten cycles uh, ten cycles so or so so then you basically you, you then you would you would like to learn uh the mechanism for how much information you need to hold in cache yeah. and how do you do how do you how do you do the mem the efficiently the exactly the branch prediction yeah. uh, that, that's basically they're solving the same problem there mm -hmm. right because they yeah. need to predict what operations we will do in the future really quickly with ai before we actually start doing it so mm -hmm. we would allocate the correct amount of uh, uh memory uh cpu etc for different operations and uh right yeah because with even cash with, you with okay you never put in uh, at least i think you don't put at least in truck instructions into ram right you have different levels of cash of l1 l2 or 3 right but yeah like my main like this is cool like 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 you said these are like uh, very like uh rudimentary issue uh examples they're dealing with this is one example uh per network right so it would be interesting to see, like, if you try to, I don't, if, I don't know if the word is generalize it, but basically go deeper into it, that you have multiple instructions uh, that the network can do, and how does it operate with, uh, okay, you can just keep increasing the memory size, but how does it, like, uh, yeah, remember what, what instruction what means and how to use memory and stuff. That was just interesting, because I, I, this paper is so old, I presume that everyone was already dealing with that issue, and most likely inside AMD and Intel, they are dealing with it, but that is, Either uh, let's say that is a, they don't I don't know if they publish research paper yet. Most likely, if, if they do, it's only patents. Yeah, I I, I would say it's uh, the closer it gets to engineering, the less likely it is that there will be 
papers, P papers, because it's like gets <laughs> more hands on cost benefit. Uh, I got, there was always like, I don't know if it's still true, but I remember, I don't know if it is true. I remember hearing that the WD40 never published a patent on their oil. Because if they don't publish a patent, nobody can actually nobody actually knows what's inside the oil. They can't uh, uh, reproduce it. Yeah. Well, they know what's inside, but they don't know yeah. how to mix it. Yeah, they mix it. They don't know, and they don't know the exact uh, ratios. I mean, they can they can test it. But... I mean, you, you should be able to figure that one out. Yeah. Because it's a no, like a, the type of liquid probably is, uh, oil should be <laughs> not that hard to analyze. Yeah, I guess. I, I, so, okay. oh, yeah, I just I remember hearing that it was like interesting idea. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's the classic. Uh, what's in the Coke recipe or whatever? Actual Coke. Uh. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> and there is still something from Coca leaves. Actually, Coca Cola is one of the biggest producers of Coke in the world. Medical Coke, at least, or whatever the medical term for it is. Uh, but no. off to the tangents. Uh, this, this, <laughs> These graphs were cool. I like these graphs. I didn't like the memory graph. I mean, I I didn't understand the memory graphs as well because these these were the uh, mm -hmm. number graph. Because uh, this figure number four was easier to understand, right? You have, you have a target and output. So the first two uh, columns on the left side. So there is ten and twenty. We see the copying is uh, perfect, and then we start to go. I think it's thirty and fifty or whatever the numbers were. Yeah, it's thirty and fifty. Like, uh, uh, like the vector sizes that are copying, and then we can see we start getting. Well, basically, the wrong colorings are basically errors, right? And then we see. Yeah, but uh, but they are relatively say, limited errors compared to. I think they are pointing out this one specific error where they add yeah. one extra column, which is bad yeah. because that breaks things. Yeah, so that creates a big relative error. But yeah, uh, so the, so basically with all the examples they did quite well. The only thing that was difficult to understand, for example, if you go to figure five, like uh, what exactly, yeah, I'm not figure five, I think six. This, I, this think, is so, I think five is also cool to show that LSTM yeah. memory is fundamentally not memory, but it is, uh, it's, a, it's a hack. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it. It is in some. It's like a. It's not a. It's not a memory. It kind of it. It is not a very thing to generalize as well. Basically, yeah. it it overfits a lot to whatever sequence you're you're inputting it in. And here it is also a question. Like they show generalization performance, but it like analyzing LSTM generalization performance while cutting it. <laughs> From different, like they, uh, if you look at training graphs, like, well, at which point did they, did they take the? Yeah. Uh, I think if you take it from here, the LSTM might also perform better than if you take it from the end because uh, uh, LSTMs probably overtraining lose a lot of generalization because they have a mechanism to basically copy the sequence into the network as much as possible. Yeah, so I mean, they will yeah, overfit to the, let's say, training uh, examples. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I agree with that. But I mean, I think the result would, I'm most likely the result would be a bit better, but it's yeah, still, but I think, the general idea would be the same that uh, yeah, you can't generalize as well. This is not a question of it being better. This is a, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, that is even yeah. close to what it is. A, a bit. Uh, <laughs> a bit. Maybe is it? I mean, I, I think you. I think human pattern recognition takes over and it goes like, yeah, these things are similar. Can't you see that there is this object and this object here? This is basically, but this is also still inside. I know. I, I mean, if you look at the very first, basically, the very first uh, one is. Correct. Yeah, but this is but this is not not generalized know, yet because it's the same. I know. I'm talking size. about the uh, target output in the very first uh, uh, column. Uh, in the hundred one, in the, the, in the, the last one. Yeah. Yeah, in the very uh, last column. Well, but that makes sense because uh, yeah. it's still uh, yeah, like I know. <laughs> starts, starts from the same thing and it's like, yeah. oh, you can, but the, even that is not perfect, which is also interesting. Yeah. I would it's, assume it's, it's, here it is, uh, the start is perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting that the longer it gets, the sooner it gets worse. 
and this is, this is both for LSTM and for the NTM. Yep. Cool. And then the, and then the, the third kind of graph that they show, if you go to figure six. Yeah, so these, these were a bit more difficult for me to understand. Uh, I mean, I, I understand the input, I understand the output, right, for the like the first row. And but the ads and reads, this was this was like more difficult to understand what's going on here. It's like just, just some kind of cool visualization. Like you can see that the adding is still going on even after the no input is given anymore. Like still something is going on inside the neural network, right? Mm -hmm. uh, was there also a plot? Similar plot for here. Mm. But yeah, basically, they did uh, different tasks. They did copy. Uh, they did uh, a number of copies. With the one with the number of copies was interesting to me that they normalized uh, the number. Uh, that uh, so basically the the uh, problem was basically you give an input within some f and then you repeat it uh, some number of times, and then they mm -hmm. trained it uh, with uh, up to length ten I think and up to. Uh, the repeat things of 10, I think, as well. That was, I think. Mm -hmm. And then they normalized it to 10. So basically, the input of 1 meant 10, right? What do you mean, input of 1 meant 10? They, uh, so, they, so they said that they normalized uh, the. Is this one? Uh, the other way. Uh, basically, uh, the no, uh, mean zero uh, for that. Yeah, what's here? Go back. Oh, wait. I know. Go back. Uh, I'll try to find it. The input representing the repeat number was normalized yeah. to have mean zero and various one. Yeah, that was interesting to me. Like, I, I don't exactly understand why you would do that. I agree. So I know everything. So you like, basically you basically lose the information of how many times you are repeating, in the, uh, basically. I mean, uh, you. Yeah, you. I mean, you only you you have the information how repetitive it is. So you basically have a, a parameter that says is the pattern repetitive. Yes. Or how much? Yeah. I'm just wondering. But they are uh, random. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. So normalized in the space of zero, one to ten. Yeah, what well, I mean, yeah. So it's. Uh, but, it, uh, I so see. The, so the problem is, why are they doing this? If they are right later doing the same thing, but they are now uh, cut them plots. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the actual thing? Uh, here, okay, nice. Uh, so yeah, so it's interesting how it is able to handle <coughs> handle the length uh, changes if they are normalizing the lengths, right? So that's the point. They're not they're not handling over ten, right? Because after if they go over ten, they they start getting the whatever delimiter. So basically, what they did was that. Uh, uh, it, after it, after it outputs the correct number of repetitions, it should have a delimiter which says that okay, this is now the end. But what happened was that if they go over ten, which they normalize to, then they start the network starts putting the delimiter after every copy over ten. It doesn't really know when to stop. I think if I understood that correctly, something like that. Yeah, I have to have to see. I think I. I'll be strong one. Yeah, but it is, if you go to the figure eight like text, is, it is unable to predict when the sequence will end 
emitting the end marker after the, the end of every repetition be beyond 11. Uh, the, uh, are these the red things? The what? The, the, the I think so. I, I didn't, didn't really explain that much, but I would presume yeah, but so. I, th I, th I think these artifacts are from that. Yes. After, after, uh, after the middle point, basically, yeah. they start generating these artifacts. Yes. And they don't really know when to end. Yeah, but I was, I mean, I would say they set up the problem in a way that it is not possible for it to know that information. Maybe, I think so, at least. I mean, it's, 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 sorry? You're correcting. Uh, I don't know, it's okay, it's okay now. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, I was just one wondering that, I would at least like, I mean, you always usually uh, uh, normalize to a uh, mean zero and variance one, right? Uh, but it would be interesting to see, because I mean, I just have like this inner sense, <laughs> which might be completely wrong, that intuition. I would, uh, intuition that I wouldn't want to normalize this. I uh, mean, zero and variance one, I don't know. I might be, I might be totally wrong intuition, might, might not change anything, might just make training harder. I j but I don't know, for some reason. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I uh, have a similar intuition, but I don't have an experience of training such networks <laughs> to be like, is the intuition correct or not? But uh, but my, I have a similar intuition that why not have that information? So you're basically introducing a bias, an extra bias to it. But, but th there is also the point that uh, the Cont like, but the op opposing argument is that then it doesn't know, that isn't able to fit to the actual numbers, but it has to. Because I mean, their explanation to it that, that it isn't able to fit to numbers, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I don't remember what the text was exactly. It was yeah. But I don't think it would so, otherwise fit the numbers. Would it fit the numbers? I don't know. Though, I don't know if, if it would. <laughs> so, repeat copy. Uh, so basically, they say that uh, uh, this figure six. Don't have. Uh, I just how it is unable to keep count of how many repeats it has completed and does not predict the end marker correctly. This is probably a consequence of representing the number of repetitions numerically, which not, does not easily generalize beyond a fixed range. But so the question is, can you generalize uh, an in, uh, what's the word? random numbers? Somehow. I mean, logically, it should just take the number in, put it into a for loop and have a go with it. Yes. Yes, so. so it should be able to, but you do, but the problem is you don't want it to use that number during training. To be like, if it's number one, you do X, if it's number two, you do yeah. number, uh, you do uh, Y, but those two things are separate. You would want those things to be generalized, so you, so you try yeah. to put it into yeah. abstract. It should do, I mean, in the sense, yeah, if it, I mean, in one sense, it, if it is X, you have to do X, meaning you have to do, the thing, thing x times, right? <laughs> no, no, no. But my point is, uh, I know what you They don't want it to. They don't want it to have two different uh, paths yeah. if if the op yeah, okay. input is different. But I don't see how changing it. If if your normalization is from zero to one, I don't see how it helps that much. No, not zero to one. Minus one. To one. I guess. Because <laughs> the mean value. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, minus <laughs> one to so. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, not, uh, that is also 95% or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but still, it's, uh, I don't see how it's fundamentally different based on how they describe how they're training it. It, <laughs> it seems like something like, oh, yeah, you need to do this thing. Uh, and we did it and uh, we moved on, but maybe the other one might. Yeah, it would just interesting to see what would happen if you don't do that. Maybe it's a lot worse, right? Yeah. It's just Anyways, there is also uh, LSTM that works better uh, in this case.
to me it made a lot a lot of sense that it works better in this case yeah I, I would presume if you go to if the length of the finger repeating goes longer then it may does it worse right but if it depending on how many repeat numbers it does that then it generalizes better yeah but uh, I would say LSTM at least LSTM has some at, the, at least as I would expect it to be better at uh, repetitions than one long sequence. But it's still, but it's still like very bad. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but that, that's because LSTMs are imperfect. But I would assume LSTMs to do well on repeat tests because they, of the structure of that network. I was like surprised that they are surprised. And to quote them, they also say these two results suggest that the NTM's external memory is a more effective way of maintaining the data structure than LSTM's internal state. And basically, the idea is that uh, the LSTM forgets the it, it's internal state in them. It's like, uh, what was I supposed to be outputting again? Yeah, <laughs> I got, I'm looping over something, and then uh, you, you, you basically you accumulate all small errors into yeah, bigger errors. Yeah. So if you if you if you have gone to shit already, you don't recover. You don't have, let's say, an external thing that you are referencing yourself to all yeah. the time. Which is actually very interesting is that uh, beginning of the repetitions, it like at the very beginning is good and it gets bad and it gets better for a bit. It's like it really remembers that. Oh, okay, that was. What you mean this one? Yeah, yeah, and then it gets. Worse. Okay, I, I, I don't think this is necessarily. Because if you look at the left side, right, it gets quite bad quite fast, but then it gets better for a bit. <laughs> it, gets, it forgets the same stuff, and then it, it then it's like, oh fuck it, I give up. Yeah, but it's uh, but it's repeating the wrong pattern here. It's repeating only the right side of this pattern, which is cool. Oh yeah, uh, uh, actually, well, I guess the issue with me with under, uh, misunderstanding this a bit is that for me. I guess I intuitively think that uh, when it's like the blue and red, it's like the, if it's blue or red in the results, then it's correct. But it's not like that, right? No, it is. It is basically. So uh, red is uh, one, uh, yeah, blue yeah. is zero, and if it is, if it is, uh, if it that is correct, then it's great. If the other colors are there, then it's it, uh, it, that's definitely wrong. But still, if it's in the result, it, it results it can be red or blue, and it's still that can still be wrong. That's yeah. Different. Yeah, so, so, so there is a completely wrong shape here, uh, and yeah, it's, so, it's duplicating this shape over and over and over again because that's the that's the thought thing that it kind of like uh, doing. <laughs> that's the thing that it is propagating through at each step, and there is a very small input from uh, the rest of the thing, and it just does the same st same state. You can imagine LSTMs closer to, let's say, you have a model of how the thing moves in time, and then you have like a loop, one loop, and it uh, the LSTM is doing that loop here, and the, all all of it that it remembers is this part, but it doesn't really. It's like the other part, ah, fuck it, I did not learn that, so it converts to learning some kind of this type of pattern, which is cool. So for for me, it would be just it would be easier to understand the results if they didn't. They represent it like this, that they would represent the differences from what it should output. Ah, yeah, well, fair. Because uh, that would make yeah. it a lot easier to understand. Or at least a third, third thing, because I think these are also really cool to look at visually. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um, it is also cool to see here that there is a constant copier. Yeah. Uh, no, that's this that... part and this part. Because yeah, that, that was what the wondering. Because this is only ten that this can't be the delimiter, right? This is just a copy error. I would say so. This is this. Uh, this looks like uh, it has uh, during training has messed up something basically. But the coolest part with this one is, is if you go to Figure Nine. For me, at least, is the last sentence of Figure Nine. It's basically what do the white dots on the bottom of the right side mean? And these are. Uh, the white dot at the bottom of the uh, read waiting seems to be correspond to an intermediate location used to re redirect the head to start of the sequence, the NTM equivalent of a go-to statement. So basically, it's a pointer to the uh, beginning of the array. And I was like, yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the generalization part is really cool, like yeah. uh, basically manipulating. Yeah, because 
well, theoretically, you could say that uh, like go go to states statements are like magic. You can do all kinds of stuff with go to mm -hmm. and with memories, and like you can write programs that do completely different things if you only have go to and. and Basic, I think also that this, I guess the last element in the array, so it shifts through the array, right? And then I think the last element should be like a go-to statement to basically, uh, but I wonder why does it have like a, why is the go-to statement so far away? Does, why does it have the go-to statement in the, just at the end of the array? Why is it like so far away? Is it just, I don't know, so kind of seg segmented somehow? Or do you see what I mean? Understand what I mean? Ah, uh, yeah, why is the, because basically it's not here, not not here, right? Yeah, because what yeah, currently has, has to have a separate pointer to the go to one and then from the go to one. At least or some 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 way it has to understand how how to go to the go to statement before it can go back to the beginning of the way. It's just interesting. Why why does it resolve it like this? Yes, I agree that it's interesting. Um and uh but yeah, I, th I think that the neural network output some something and that triggers something else. Yeah. And if, you, if this is triggered, then something else is triggered in some like, and that's why they put it like a go to statement. Mm -hmm. So it's like, a, so this is like a, this is like a, an if, if, uh, uh, if some uh, make more, if output this, like or like a big if function gets this output and then it goes like now trigger go to and uh, then go to goes from here basically yeah but but then it has to go back to the if statement every time because you can see if it, it reads it as many times as it needs to read i mean the good part with neural networks is it always goes through all of this thing <laughs> it always calculates all of it and then sometimes it goes into that if, and if it goes into that if, then it goes to the go to statement mm -hmm. to this basically. Basically, you have like a you have a while loop, and you have like a if result is uh, four, then uh, go to here, and uh, this node here represents if result is four. It is how I understood it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it also went. So basically, each net ex exercise was a bit more difficult. Next time, they basically gave the it had to learn like a sequence of uh, things, and then if you get like an input, so basically they they gave it like uh, an array of other vectors, and then if uh, after after giving it an array of vectors, you give one of the vectors again, and then it has to, has to give out the, basically the next vector, the vector after it. It's just it's not that understandable. <laughs> I don't know. The, the, basically, if you show the figure, it's easy to understand. A uh, figure twelve, uh, uh, it, yeah, right under there. So that's figure twelve. So basically, we have an input right on the left side, and then each. So there is. So there is. So there are the dots. Each the so the eight, seventh uh, row. So we can see the dots, the independent dots. Between the dots, there are elements. So array elements. So the, each array element is uh, three columns wide. And eight eight bits long, or there, and uh, between the dots there are elements, and then uh, you, so they give input this as this array, which consists of uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six elements, and after the array, they now have a new let's say operator is the uh, eighth row, which basically means now uh, I am giving uh, you a new input, and uh, what is the what is what comes after this uh, array element. Uh, so they input, so they input the second array element again, and they want to get the third element out, and they get the nice, and they get the third element out. Mm. Search, search, yeah, basically, sort. Yeah. So that was interesting. I mean, these are like interesting tasks, but yeah, I would like to see like something more <laughs> difficult. Yeah, it's like basically, yeah. Uh... Like key value pair, <laughs> if it's mm -hmm. to like uh, if you separate it like uh, with some more more lines here, if if they are like key mappings and after the input, yeah, that's cool. And then they did the uh, n grams. So here, at least 
uh, figure, yeah. figure. I didn't really understand the figure 15 part. So they, so basically there was like the, basically there was an issue. Uh, I didn't really, like, I was already tired when I was reading this as well. Uh, me, me too, I uh, kind of gave up at, uh, let's say, the few last uh, results skimmed. Uh, so, uh, very well, tough, well, very hard. Well, we're not going to go over them exactly, but if we, it, interesting was if we go like into the conclusion that they, so I, I so here I guess everything that all the results they specifically showed like what the memory other what the memory looked at like and stuff everything was with LSTM uh, network so they didn't I think they didn't show anything for the feed forward network they only showed uh, this the training details mm -hmm. but yeah again the the tables are all all in the wrong places which is quite annoying. But yeah, we can yes. see that the feed forward network had to have a lot of more heads. So if you look at table one versus table two, uh, the feed forward network had to have a lot, a lot more heads and a lot more parameters in general than the LSTM one. Uh, mm -hmm. but just, and the controller right, size was, was also bigger. So it seems like and I think the result, I mean, the efficacy, efficacy of both of them was quite the same, uh, but just LSTM is uh, more efficient in the sense that it's smaller. Yeah, uh, in most cases, yeah, but not not necessarily always. So there were yeah. also uh, similar, uh, like, uh kind of different different results mm -hmm. but i would say the main question here is more like how recurrent the problem actually is mm -hmm. um oh yeah basically feed forward network can use the memory i mean the, basically like the, i think they say the same thing and uh, i mean they say the same thing in the article that the, basically the feed forward network can act as an LSTM because it has memory and then it can just write to some memory places what, whatever information it needs to keep right. But then it's just like bandwidth limited by the heads. As the recurrent network already has the information inside the network, so it doesn't need to access the information like separately. Basically, uh, uh, like uh, the recurrent network has like L1 cache and L2 cache, L2 cache being the, uh, or I mean, like, I guess it has extra registers or however you want to think about it. But yeah, uh, which the feed forward network doesn't have, and then it has to access the memory specifically. And that means it needs more heads and uh, a bigger controller. That's how I understood it, basically. Yeah. So let's say you have, like, now somebody gives you a practical problem. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, you have a vehicle driving, and you have an option of modeling it using uh, a recurrent net like usually you would probably go with a recurrent network and then like why not go LSTM already mm -hmm. that would be let's say the easy like the uh, a problem that it would solve so it would try to learn a model of the vehicle and then LSTM would act as the memory mm -hmm. What's your intuition? How does this approach of storing permanent memory compare in that situation? I mean, then, then you, I think that's why you, what I was thinking about before, you need to have, start thinking about, because with, like, say, so I, was, I, I started thinking in my head, so I didn't listen to you. <laughs> but I think you said about basically self driving cars, right? It was the issue. Well, whatever. The, wait, wait, yeah. what, what doesn't matter which, what, uh, but let's say dynamic modeling, like you, kinematics or dynamics, whatever, modeling, how a body moves. Yeah, yeah. so the issue there is latency specifically, uh, with, because I mean, whatever, uh, I think when Elon Musk was on uh, Lex Friedman last time, because they, they, they're talking about like getting like, not nanoseconds, but like improving the latency a lot just by concentrating and removing some stuff and removing like uh, post processing by sensors and stuff. And here mm -hmm. the issue would be that uh, I think you would, so everything would have to like where you can sync. So basically you'd have to have, you can't, you wouldn't be able to put it in like uh, RAM, let's say, because it's just too slow, I think. 
So you would need to be working uh, in the every space. You would need uh, what's the word? You would need. I think ideally you would need to need memory based. Uh, so the memory based architecture, uh, like the memory based computing. So always. Uh, so everything is. So basically everything has to be. Behind. Everything's in a GPU. <laughs> uh, all the time, right? And uh, my question is, can you do? You, would you have enough memory for that? Because then you, because you need to like. Uh, that, that was like I, I don't have any answers because that, that was like the interesting part for me to understand like how this can go forward, is that like like what kind of I information is start it would like start keeping for I images and stuff. Yeah, I was, depends I a lot on the inputs. Like uh, depends on if yeah. you're try if you're trying to do. I, I I wasn't actually thinking about putting camera images in. There. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't put there, but uh, I guess. The car would put some kind of information with representations or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but then then the latency problem hits you in the face really, really, yeah. really hard because the camera image processing, getting latency down there is very, very hard. Yeah, so that was, I was saying you can't have like you can't have in a sense you can't have RAM. Everything has to work like cycle to cycle. It has to be like a big network. Like here, basically, you don't have this. You don't have the latency with accessing memory because everything is in step. Uh, but this it just makes it might make it computationally every cycle make it slower and then you have to see if there is like a trade off uh, positive or negative with it but i think in general i think if you can add memory you should and i would like to see what happens if you do <laughs> yeah i mean there is a good like let's say uh, with memory you could get stuff like what terrain am i driving on without saying yeah. that there is uh, that there exists a thing called terrain yeah. Now, and also, the question is, and in some way, the question is, would would it be better for would like trying to understand where neural like this approach would be better in real life? Would it be better than LSTM for that uh, specific problem? Hard to a, tell. Hard, hard to tell. Yeah. How, how? Like because I I guess it's like depends a lot on kind of what do it would actually store because if you uh, would try to analytically store uh, all the things that are interesting for each state then it would there would be quite a bit of stuff to store yeah um, but yeah so it would, it would be interesting to see actually one thing it would be just interesting to see what they would what the neural network would, would want to store and access later right Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. That's actually even more important. But then you would need to understand the network enough to be like, ah, it is doing that. Uh, it's quite hard to analyze complex problems like that. Yeah, and this what so my so my my one of my main takeaways from this is like it's quite for me. I mean, the first time I saw it like a year ago, this paper. I don't know. I didn't re read it, then, but it seemed interesting. And it seems like to have a lot of at least it seems to it's uh, like it's. It's a, it's a more generalized, I think, in a sense, a neural network. I mean, it's not more generalized. It's basically because I mean, I you, I think I don't know if it can happen, but theoretically, a neural network could create right. So if I, if I think of a neural network as an FPGA, a neural network could create a memory block inside itself, right? But it, I don't know if it, it if it can actually do that or not. <laughs> but basically, just giving it the purpose-built memory block. And seeing what it does with it now that it has it, it's like uh, I don't know if if I make any sense. You could say, uh, well, you could. I would, I would, I would argue that the memory of a classical neural network are the weights. Yes. So okay. and uh, and the neural network overfitting is it using too much memory? Okay. Well, yeah. So it's like you're you're matching your weights in a way that you get exactly the training data. So it's basically you're using too much memory instead of you are using like because you don't have you don't have a separation between computation like this uh, going yeah. processing and memory. And I would say that's where memory would is like awesome that you can. Uh, Basically, like if you are able to separate those, those things, then it also would, m might mean that you don't need to overfit to data as much because you can keep part of what you want to store in memory. 
But I think the neural network would still want to overfit if it can. But I mean, overfitting is usually, I mean, it's the fault of the whoever pro made the neural network. So you have to know when to stop fitting, right? <laughs> but I mean, given the chance, the neural network would overfit as much as you can, right? That's oh, yeah, but have, uh, that's uh, unless, and every stopping and stuff. Yeah, unless you have, yeah, but the, the, let's say, yeah. But <laughs> then you can yeah. at least, you can at least separate their signal into, uh, I mean, the learning methods that we have today are very basic anyway, so you could at least imagine more complex uh, or a combination of uh, more complex learning methods. Uh, well, uh, and, uh, yeah. But basically, this is a at least I think we both think the same thing. It's a very cool thing, and uh, we hope that there is a lot more research into this. Maybe the maybe so I think we should pick next paper the next time. Next paper, uh, this thing, and this, this thing, and this paper, and then then we can see maybe well, maybe they already understood that this is all pointless. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yes. We're a few years uh, behind schedule. Yeah. But it's uh, anyway maybe. currently. Quite optimistic. At least seems cool. Yeah. Um, this at least has quite a, quite a few citations. So. Yeah. So that would uh, uh, go go even further with it. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Nature. <laughs> Great search. Alex Graves. Um, I think it was easier. By date. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think it was easier if you go to arch archive and so it's always there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. Always I'll just click on Alex Graves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sort results by announcement date. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So there is a lot of, at least there is a lot of uh, papers. I think we, at least I would like to stick to the sub subjects for a while. So I think we can like, yeah. uh, start doing a historical perspective on what has been happening. And then we can say a lot of things and then be corrected by each new paper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's see how it goes. Okay, cool. Uh, well, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Tune in next time if you're uh if you want to <laughs> yes oh bye bye i will uh, stop the recording